Remember back early in chapter P uh, when we were talking about how addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and finally exponents could be represented as operations on the number line. So for example, we could think of 2 plus 5 as starting at 0, moving 2 to the right, and then moving 5 to the right. And that this was a way to think about addition visually on, on the number line. And where we ended up was our answer. And then subtraction, if we did 2 minus 5, we could think of this as starting at 2 and then moving left 5. So we end up at 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, we end up at minus 3, which tells us that 2, then going 5 steps to the left, left us at minus 3. Then we started counting not by plus 1s, but by plus n's. So for example, 2 plus 5, you would start at 0 and then do 5 plus 2's. So 1 plus 2 would land you at 2. The next one, you'd be at 4. After a third plus 2, you'd be at 6. And after 5 of these, you'd end up at 10, which would tell you that 5 times 2 is 10. And division division asks the question, how many steps does it take to get to 5 in steps of 2. So starting at 0 and counting by 2's, you can't exactly get to 5 counting by 2's, so you have to take a, you end up having to take a half step from 4 to 5 to finally get to exactly 5. So the answer to this was two and one half step, or one, two, three, four, five half steps. So you could think of five divided by two as five half steps, or as 2.5 steps of size two. Then we introduced exponents. Now with exponents we weren't counting by you know plus one or plus two or plus anything anymore we were counting by times. So something like two to the fifth you don't start counting at zero you start counting at one and your next step was a times two. So you went from one to two and then your next step was times two. So two times two, your next step was four. Third step would be four times two, which is eight. Then sixteen and finally, after your fifth times two, you ended up at 32, 
which we took to be the answer for 2 to the 5th. And then we talked about radicals and having fractions in the exponent and what that meant. That meant how large of a step do we have to take between 1 and 2 so that it takes five, five of these times steps to get from 1 to 2. So it takes 1, 2, 3, 4, and I screwed up 5. This is what you get for not planning and doing these all live. Now, what do we have to multiply by to reach 2 in 5 of these times-ish steps? And whatever this was, this was our answer to the fifth root of 2, or 2 to the 1 fifth. Well, there's another way to ask this question. What if we looked at, rather than saying, you know, what's the step we have to take in order to get from 1 to our goal in a fixed number of steps, what if we change the question around? What if we know where we're starting, we know where, we're, where we want to get to, and we know our step size? The question becomes, how many steps do we have to take? So, let's say something like doing steps of times two, how many steps does it take to get from one to say eight? Well, one times two gets us to two. Our second times two gets us to four. And our third times two gets us to eight. So the notation we're going to use is what we call logarithms. We're going to call this log base 2 of 8 equals 3. This is going to be our step. Our steps are going to be in terms of times 2. Our destination, our goal, is going to be 8, let's call this step size, so we can distinguish between 3 as being the number of steps required. To get to our goal using a step size of times 2. And this is the idea of logarithms. It's how many times do we have to multiply by 2 to get 8? And in this case, the answer is simply 3. So logarithms take exponents, and they're asking a different question than radicals, than fractions in the exponent. They still fix the starting point and the ending point. Now, we started at 1, we ended at 8. Here, with the fraction and the exponent, we started at 1, we're ending at 2. It's just the question is different. With radicals and fractions in our exponents, we're asking, what's the step size to get to our goal in the desired number of steps? Whereas with logs, we know where we're starting, we know where we're ending, but this time we know the size of our steps. Our question is, how many times do we have to do this step in order to get to our goal?